Sweeney here, and welcome to another Digital Triggers podcast where we bring you weekly ammunition that you can use in your business. This week, or today rather, we have on Lori R. Taylor from Social Caffeine. Now, she was named one of Forbes' top 50 social media power influencers for the past two years in a row. We bring her on today to talk about a variety of subjects, and some of the things she touches on is how she uses Amazon to actually find solutions for her customers. So she's using Amazon reviews in a unique way to get uh, basically offers, new products, content creation, and headlines. Very awesome stuff, and this is something I haven't really thought of or heard of doing before. She also gives us a simple method using 10 blog posts to create a content creation masterpiece, so to speak. I mean, I'm talking ebook, videos, how to syndicate it, putting it on slideshare.net, which is highly underutilized. I mean, she is the content queen. She really gives us a good basis. Check it out. I sell a cooking product, okay, a raw product in the cooking book. You can put that in there, and guess what you should be reading? The reviews. That's all you care about is the reviews. You can look at the table of contents if the reviews are whatever and figure out from the table of contents you can get a lot of great headlines for blog posts. Okay. And, but you can get a lot of great, like that's how I get some great headlines is going to Amazon and looking at books around the subject I'd like to talk about. But reading those Amazon reviews and going on forums and reading what people are talking about, about the problem you're trying to solve because what is, okay, other than the audience, what's the second most important problem? What problem? What then you have to figure out what problem they need solved. What does a real? What does a thousand realtors in Cincinnati, Ohio, care about? Probably real estate in Cincinnati, Ohio. Probably, probably real estate in Ohio. Not, not that you can't convince them they should be branching out to other states, but you got to solve their immediate problem. Something they believe they can do, and then expand their mind. And that's the same thing you have to do in social media with your customers. I mean, that I mean that was a that was a really good point. That's that's an interesting thing. I've never. Um, approached it in that manner when you are trying to solve problems for customers, go to Amazon, read the reviews of books and, and things related to your market, to your niche, and find out what people are actually saying. That's and especially a low-rated product, like if something has a lot of reviews and three stars, go there. Because you know what, people are like, you know, I read this, and it wasn't near as good as blah, 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 because she really goes into how to da, 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 da. And then you start to see what books they do like, because they reference them right away, and then what they're missing, and it's like, you can go to the five star reviews because you should. What what is it? What words are they using to say that they like that? What what the, if they're saying those are the most delicious, scrumptious recipes I've ever had, and I love the barbecue shrimp the most, and you see barbecue shrimp means in, in six out of ten reviews. Hey, who else wants to make the best barbecue shrimp in the world? It's good, scrumptious and delicious. Never everyone high five and you know use the words because those are your avatars. Those are the people who have bought. They have used your wallet to vote. So I don't love surveys. It's not a wallet vote. Mm -hmm. It's not a wallet vote. And, you know, nothing's more important than a wallet vote. And Amazon's usually, not always, but usually it's a wallet vote. And those are the most important votes. Nothing else to me. I don't care about your survey. I care about your wallet vote, you know, vote <laughs> more and than So that, that kind of brings up an interesting point, something I thought about when you were kind of mentioning that in the customer demographic. I would say that um, not that you can ever predict viral. But if you are drilled in in your customer demographic, that's why sometime where you see some of these blog posts like seven things you can learn about business from Harry Potter or seven things that Game of Thrones taught us about social media, I would say that's when they're really tapped into their customer demographic and they're saying, okay, our customer demographic loves Harry Potter, loves Game of Thrones, or loves you know one of these you know popular books or movies. How can we tie this into our business so then we can kind of get them talking about it and, and you're going to instantly probably grab their attention too. Yeah, it helps with SEO, especially like Game of Thrones is hot. You know, House of Cards there was really hot. So if your audience is someone that's going to watch Netflix, is digitally savvy and, you know, kind of a – although older people do watch Netflix, but, you know, it's a little bit younger of a demographic, you know, um, that's a really great one to work with. And I use that at, at, at my blog, you know, when J-Lo was on American Idol. You know, tying in current events to your message is awesome. You know, um, I just – being personal, like I – for an example, I think you were asking me off the record, like how I came up with content ideas. Well, mm -hmm. one of the best things I do is I subscribe to other people's stuff. I mean, like I love my swipe files, and I love an email that gets me, and I don't put them all in a swipe file. Like don't let them all go into my same later box, you know, my email management system. I come in there because I want to see who catches my attention. And the other day, someone's attention is like, I just can't get out of bed. And I thought, well, I just have to. <laughs> 
she says, and it was his message. It was like, do I know this person? And I read it, and he was talking about his dad died. And uh, and it was a beautiful. It wasn't too personal. It was kind of something I could relate to. If anyone had a dad or you loved your dad, and I can tear up now thinking about this email. It was so well done, and at the end, it was talking about what's important in life and where you should really prioritize your business as it relates to being personal. And I'm actually going to – I sent him back email, and, and he sells a product, but he didn't talk about his product. He was just building – he was sharing something with his audience and didn't mention his product at all in this particular email. And it wasn't a waste of my time because it was meaningful and it was well done. And um, it was a personal development guy. And and so then I took the email and I'm putting it at my blog and I'm writing a blog post as when is an email to TMI, you know, just right. So it's like what would Goldilocks say about this email? Is it you know, is this right, just too cold, too hot, whatever, or is it just perfect? And for me, it was just perfect. But that's something I'll, I'll write and because I write – more normal uh, headlines, like you know, three ways to do this. Thing. It'll get get big. people. They're going to read it, right? Now, if I did it all the time, it kind of loses its wow factor, right? So you kind of have to put it in there in the right mix to where it's like, I really want people to read that article. Of all the articles I wrote in the last couple of months, I hope people read that article because for me, it's the part people miss the most is putting your heart into your business because I think business is personal. When you're trying to write a book, I always tell people if you could think of a book on Amazon as uh, an ebook, you know, as ten blog posts, you would have an ebook, right? If you just came out, so you have the, the thousand word posts, ten, find the ten best titles out there you can around your subject, tweak them, and then pick those your chapters, and then write to them. I mean, that is the easiest way. And guess what you could do? You were talking about content creation. So here's the cool thing. Let's say you want to write. Let's say I want to write a book on how to rock Facebook, uh, uh, right? I could create a ten post series. Um, a thousand epic posts is what I call them, a thousand to fifteen hundred words. Um, and you can always do a snippet at the top if you want to, like a you know, notes of it. These are the highlight points, and here's the article. Um, I suggest always doing a 30 second video. If you notice on my blog, I don't do them. And there's a good reason for that. I don't like to put my makeup on and do my hair. So <laughs> I should do them. I'm missing an opportunity, but you should if you can. The perfect way, and get ready, write this down. You're going to run and write this down because if you do it, you will see results. And you will love me, and you'll write me a blog, a post at my blog, comment, and tell me how awesome I am. Okay, that's our deal. Deal. Okay. So, so simple. Some of you guys are, oh, that's so simple. And then I'm going to ask you, but are you doing it? And when you tell me no, I'm going to say, grab your pencil, grab your paper, write it down, because you're not doing it. So if it's so simple, you should be doing it, right? Okay. Ten posts. So let's just say you always want to write a book, but you know you're never going to do it. Fine. Ten, ten posts, we can all do that. Even if you hire someone, you know, if you hire someone to write your book, they're going to charge you thousands of dollars. If you hire someone to write a thousand word blog, but even a good person might charge you two hundred, right? It, I mean, literally, you could spend two hundred dollars and have a really good blog post written. So have your blog post written. Come up with ten killer headlines. Write your things. Maybe it takes you ten weeks. Maybe for some of you it takes you ten months. I don't care. Okay, you do one a month. Okay, I'm going to rock this. With each one, you're going to do a video that says, "Hey, today I'm going to be talking about blah 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 blah." If you're like me, you don't want to put your makeup on, all the stuff, then do a little do a little PowerPoint thing. Big deal. Five slides. These are the five points I'm going to cover. Make it less than a minute. Okay? Just, just do yourself a favor. No one wants to hear about what you're going to talk about for ten minutes. So do yourself there. Do your little YouTube thing. Put it at YouTube, right, because you're going to link there because that's going to help you get some juice. So now you have ten videos at the end of this. You have ten blog posts at the end of this. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I mention that for your post, you need to have an image? You should have an image, something compelling that at least it with maybe a caption. So you create that. Now you have to, it's not hard, not hard to grab an image, people. Don't steal. Go to Shutterstock. It's really cheap to do it. 25 free downloads a day. Just do not steal content. It's terrible. So put your picture there. Oh, and then just put it over at Pinterest. Put a board. Top ways to rock your fan, fan base. And then put your image there and make sure you have a call to action. Lead them back to the blog post. Right? So they click the image. They go back to your post. So at the end of the day, you now have 10 images that you've created. So you have a little board of Pinterest going. You should build off of that if you're being really industrious. But I'm talking bare minimum. You have 10 blog posts, and you have 10 videos. So then you take your 10 blog posts, hand them off to someone, pay them four or $500, 1000 whatever, do it yourself, put them together. Amazon doesn't care. Put it together in an ebook. Just put the post as is in the ebook if you want to, and put that up at Amazon. Boom, you have a book. You can have you have if you don't want to put it on Amazon, you have now a lead magnet. Hey, all my posts upgrade together, get it free, sign up right now. These are the best the best of Facebook. You don't have to say if you dig through my blog long enough, you'll find them. You don't have to say that. You just say, Here's here it is. And at the end of the day, you are done. 
I don't care what your subject is, you are done and you have 10 months of content, 10 weeks of content, 10 days of content. Anybody can do what I just said. Anybody can do what I just said. You can put the videos at Facebook to promote your post. You can put the slide share, the slide I talked about, like creating the slides. You can put it at slideshare.net, which is a wonderful place to put content. Very underutilized by the average bear. Go to it. You want ideas on content? Go to slideshare.net. Mm -hmm. Learn. You'll learn so much more because 90% of people are visual learners. Go there about any subject you want. I do all my research there. Love it. I love, and then, you I love know, I, I do too. And most people, it's so underutilized, you know? And so, and that's just a really simple way to actually, at the end of the day, if you did what I said, you'd have more done than you have right now. And it's not hard what I just said. And you just have a little book at the end. A little ebook you give away free. You want to be in, try and sell it for 99 cents, a dollar or something on Amazon, you could. I mean, whatever. But at the end of the day, you're just trying to create content for yourself. And if that's your strategy, you could do it all the time. I hope you enjoyed listening. If you want to watch the full interview, head on over to members.digitaltriggers.io where you can listen to us discuss a bit more about the things she mentioned here and a few other things such as how she does a social media audit for any new client of hers and how they develop a customer avatar so they know what customer they're speaking to and what that customer is interested in and what they like. This is the key to really hitting home runs with content marketing. Now we also talk about how to have your own voice in social media and in doing content, blog content. We also discuss some of the different tools that she's currently using and some new tools that she's had uh, good success with or heard about good success with. For example, Thunderclap. And lastly, we talk about an easy strategy that she's been using with some of her clients using images that has gotten a lot of engagement and done really well on Facebook. So head on over to members.digitaltriggers.io to check that out. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. I really hope to see you again next week. As always, please, please, please leave a review or rating. And uh, you guys have a good one.